I'm Luke Hay, Senior UX Researcher at an agency called ClearLift. I'm one of the mentors on the UX Brian Mentorship Program at the moment. Lucky enough to be uh, mentoring Chantel, who's here, um, for the past few months. Um, so I'd like to talk a bit today about what I've learned through being on the program, um, as well as sort of what I've learned over the last few years of my career as well, managing and mentoring people. Um, so I'd like to start off by answering the number one question that I get asked by people who are looking to get into UX, and that is, how did I get into UX? So those of you who are sort of looking to get into the industry who aren't in there already, um, this is something that often gets asked to, to people who've been there a while, and the answer to that isn't, um, isn't simple. Um, so to begin with, I'd like to take you back to the 1990s. Um, so quick question, who here was born in the 1990s? Yeah, okay. Anyone here born after 1990? Okay. Oh, <laughs> someone not sure at the back there. <laughs> Good, okay. Um, so yes, some, some young facing, which is nice to see. Um, slightly younger than, than mine. Um, but yeah, that's, the story starts with me in 1998. Um, so I didn't do very well at my A-levels. Uh, I think I sort of peaked at GCSEs and then got distracted and kind of had enough of full-time education. Um, and I was then lucky enough, by complete accident, to get a job with a local web company. So I didn't really know what I was doing. I applied for various jobs and ended up working for a, a web agency and not even, to be honest, being 100% sure what a web agency was back then in 1998, um, less than 10% of homes had the internet, so it was a whole different world to now. Uh, it was like the World West, basically. So got in completely by luck at a very early stage. Um, then the dot-com bubble happened. So for those of you who haven't heard of the dot-com bubble, in around sort of 2000 or so, everyone saw the internet was the next best thing, threw shitloads of money at it. Uh, my agency sort of trebled in size uh, within about six months and then uh, got liquidated. So we got escorted from the building uh, and not paid for the work we'd done that month. And all of that fun stuff happened. So I was kind of back to square one. Then after another couple of jobs, I ended up working for Wired Sussex. So everyone here know Wired Sussex? Are people familiar with them? Yes. Yeah. So I ran the website, which meant kind of growing the, the jobs board, kind of what it is now, and, and looking after the jobs board. But as well as looking after the website, I was also involved in a lot of the schemes that we had there. So we had... Um, the Brighton Internship Programme, which was aimed at getting people experience in the industry who didn't have the experience before. Um, we did intern placements, uh, portfolio clinics, careers fairs, that kind of thing. And working really closely with that, for me, was great because it meant that I sort of found that really rewarding and I realised that's something that I really enjoyed doing as well as the sort of more web side of things. Um, then after several fun years at Wired Sussex, I moved on to a small agency called No Pork Pies as the research director, so I effectively brought UX into the agency there. Um, and it was really good to have the first dedicated UX job. After a couple of years there, I joined Fresh Egg, um, joining originally as a conversion strategist, but then becoming the user research director over time and forming a sort of small but perfectly formed research team, of which Charlotte's one. <laughs> um, so yes, after working for Fresh Egg for a while, that was great, because I got to work with some big household names, the Open University, RSPCA, Vodafone, to name a few, and do lots of, well, hundreds of sort of user research and usability sessions. Um, I also split off and did my own freelance UX work on the side um, before Last year, um, joining ClearLift, where I'm lucky enough to be working with some of the best UXs in the UK. And it's really great to be working with a sort of proper UX-focused agency uh, who do digital transformation. But um, what does that mean? That's not just a really long intro from me. Uh, there is a point behind this. So first of all, is answering that question that I often get asked. And unfortunately, if you're asking me that question and expecting an answer that's going to help you in your career, it's not going to happen. It was very different back then. You know, I wouldn't recommend to anyone failing your A-levels and kind of getting a job with a web company because that's not really going to happen these days. Um, and also, I think what I've found out over my career is that it's a real privilege to actually uh, work with people in terms of mentoring and managing them. And that's something that I really enjoy doing. So, you know, I get a lot out of the mentorship program as well. Um, so based on my many, many, many years of experience, I've got some tips for mentees and mentors. So let's start off with seven tips for mentees. Um, so first thing first, decide if it's for you. So obviously everyone in the room is 
either on the program or considering joining the program, but have a think about whether mentorship is right for you. You know, have, what are your reasons for getting involved? Um, do you have the time as well? There's a, a commitment even from the sort of mentee side. And is working with the mentor the right way forward? You know, there's other things you can do as well. Uh, obviously, training, read books, that kind of thing. But actually, what are you going to get from a mentor relationship that you're not going to get elsewhere? Then if you decide you do want to pursue this, uh, decide where you want to start. So do you want to um, find your own mentor or do you want some assistance with that? Um, when thinking about a mentor as well, it's important to think about what you're looking for from them. What's going to be right for you? What's going to help you there? Um, and do you already know someone like that? So have you been, um, have you sort of met someone at an event like tonight or perhaps someone you're following on social media, whatever it might be, it might be that you've actually got someone in mind who you think they'd be a great mentor. I'm already learning off them. Let's make it a bit more official. So that's some of the routes in. The other way in is to join a program like the UX Brighton mentorship scheme. And definitely, I'm a bit biased, but I'd recommend doing that. It just gives you that sort of framework, that support, events like this. You're part of a community. It means that we can also help you to find a mentor as well if you need to. And before you actually finally commit to anything, I think it's really important that you think about, you know, how often you're prepared to meet, how much time you've got available, how are you going to make sure that it works both for you and for your mentor as well. Um, and think about as well, you know, on, on this program, we recommend people meet once a month, but actually do you want to stay in touch outside of that as well? You know, is it worth having an open communication channel with that Slack or email, whatever it is, just some things where you can stay in touch outside of that time as well, so you're not just meeting up once a month. And think about what will help you stick to that commitment too. You know, hopefully you'll get a lot out of your mentor, uh, but it's best to make sure you're going to be committed to it and turning up every month. It's not just going to kind of fizzle out as these things sometimes do. And one way to do that is to sort of keep it regular. So if you're meeting once a month, make sure you're meeting on the same day every month, perhaps, you know, the first of the month or the first Tuesday of every month, whatever it might be. But just make sure that you're having something so you're not constantly kind of having back and forth about when you're going to meet. Keep it easy for both of you. <laughs> and work that around your commitments as well. You know, it's a very important thing, mentoring, but you've obviously got things going on as well. So make sure it fits in with your lifestyle. Don't really rearrange everything for that. And, you know, some flexibility will be involved as well. Then think about setting an objective. So as the mentee, it's really up to you to decide what you want to get from it. You know, do you want to aim for a promotion? Do you want to learn a particular skill or methodology? Do you just want to improve your public speaking or improve your time management? Whatever it might be, think about that and think about how a mentor can help you achieve that and what's realistic to achieve in nine months. Then when you're part through the program, when you've been meeting a few times, have a review, have a think about what's working for you, see how far you've come, think about what you've learned and how you can put that into practice. Think about whether you're progressing towards your goal. And also, don't be scared to feed back to your mentor. So it's really important that it's a two-way relationship, although you feel like you want to you know, go along with whatever your mentor says, actually think, is it really helping me? Is there something better they can do to improve the, the way I can get feedback from them and improve the working relationship? Then finally, don't feel indebted. And I think this is one of the key ones, really, for mentees. And I see this a lot, that... Being part of the program, you sort of feel like you owe your mentor something. You feel like um, you, know, you should just go along with everything they say and you should be massively grateful and thankful for them. And of course, you know, I'm not saying be ungrateful, but I'm saying that you need to bear in mind that they're doing it for their own reasons as well. Uh, they're probably in a position like me where they feel a need to give something back. They feel it's rewarding and it's certainly been really interesting working with Chantel and learning from Chantel as well. So... You know, there's something in it for the mentor as well as the mentee. So don't feel indebted to them. And remember that you deserve this. You know, anyone here tonight, anyone who's on the program, uh, the fact you've actually put yourself out there, the fact you've made the effort to come along to something like this just shows how serious you are about, you know, improving your career in UX and getting into UX. And actually, you really deserve it. So, yeah, don't be hard on yourself. Just grab the opportunity, really. Then seven tips for mentors. So if you're more interested in the mentoring side of things, um, very similar steps, really. So first of all, again, decide if it's for you. Is it something that you've done before? What kind of experiences have you had? What can you learn from that? And what do you want to get out of it? Um, 
again, particularly for the mentor side of things, think if you've got the time to be involved. You know, senior UXs can be quite busy people. There can be things going on. So, again, you know, don't commit yourself to anything that you're not going to see through. And think carefully about what you've got to offer, because it might well be that, you know, you're not going to answer everyone's problems all at once. Think about what you can bring to the table, and that might just be experience you've got. It might be particular skills or knowledge. Um, think about what you're bringing to the table and then decide where you want to start. So again, it's the same sort of questions really. You know, have you thought about mentoring before? Um, do you know someone who benefit from your mentoring? So are you already talking to someone who is actually looking to get into the industry? Have you already offered advice perhaps on the, the UX Brighton Slack channel, for example? Are there people out there who you think would, would benefit from your experience? And again, if you'll think of joining a program or in mentoring informally, um, absolutely fine to mentor people in, informally. I've done that before as well. But again, going through a program like the UX Brighton one gives you that bit more structure and framework means that you're more likely perhaps to, to see things through. And I think this is the key one really for mentors. Um, so properly commit to it and set like a service level agreement almost. So actually think about your mentee almost as you would a client. You know, you wouldn't just say to a client, well, I'm a bit busy this month, so we're not going to bother meeting. Maybe I'll see you next month. You know, take it seriously. Take it on board and actually set some sort of rules around it. I'm not saying you should have some formal contract that you make them sign, but just make sure that you are actually properly committing. And think about not only the time you've got, but also the brain space. You know, we've all got lots going on. Uh, you know, can you actually take the commitment? Can you have that brain space to actually think about your mentee and what's going to help them as well? And think about what's going to help you stick to that commitment too. So it's up to the mentee to come up with an objective, but actually as a mentor, you can help them here. You know, you're the one with the experience. You'll know what's realistic and what isn't. You'll know how you can help them as well. And I think that's the key thing here. You know, you're not going to help them in every way you can. You're not their fairy godmother. You're just going to be there to assist where you can and sort of help them on their way. So think about how you can best do that. Then again, in staying in contact, so is once a month regularly enough? Uh, if not, you know, are you going to stay in touch outside of that? How much can you can you actually take on in terms of helping people out? Uh, you know, you've not got unlimited time, so make sure you're not over committing there. Um, and think about not only the time that you're spending with them, or time spending answering your questions, but you're going to spend some time perhaps preparing for your monthly meetings, some time after that to actually think about what you've spoken about and send some follow-up questions and things. So again, make sure you've got the time for that. Um, and then it's really important to know your limits and say you're not going to do everything. Um, it's really important to know where you can't help. So for me, I'm a user researcher, basically, and Chantel's a, a designer. I can't particularly help on the uh, more complex side of the design side of things. That's not really my skill set. So that's something that I know is a limitation and, you know, I can help in other ways. So know where you can't help. Um, and know as well that, you know, life things come up, uh, you know, whether that's something in your personal life or even just being really busy with work. And think about how you deal with that, how you communicate that as well to your mentee and make sure that, you know, you're both sort of on the same page. You're being honest and upfront with them. And think about supporting yourself as well. I mean, this all sounds very dramatic and harrowing, but actually, you know, you really need to think about, am I, you know, am I going to be right to see it through? Have I got the time and the, the brain space for this? And, you know, what can help me with that? And again, another final plug for the UX Brighton program, you know, you've got people like Annie Marie, who's there to perhaps support people along the way as well. You know, if there's any questions or any problems, having something like that will help perhaps smooth things over if there are any problems with the mentor program or if you just, don't have the time for it. And just to finish up for mentors, I think you probably know more than you think. Um, so you might not consider yourself to be an expert, but you probably are. Um, those of you in the room who are sort of thinking, well, I, I'm not really, you know, I haven't really done enough to be a mentor. Uh, if you've got a couple of years experience, that's really invaluable. Um, you know, a couple of years experience in the industry, if you think back to when you first started out and had no experience at all, you know, what advice could you tell yourself back then? That's the same sort of advice you can give someone looking to get onto the scheme. So even if you don't feel massively experienced, you've probably still got a lot to offer. And there's other things as well, you know, the sort of soft skills as well as the hard skills. It's not necessarily about knowing all the, all the methodologies, all the techniques inside out. It's about that experience you picked up. It's about those kind of skills and the way you've been of talking to people and, and mentoring and encouraging them. You know, that's all important as well. 
So yeah, your experience alone is invaluable. So anyone out there who's thinking of becoming a mentor, then um, yeah, definitely recommend having a think, having a chat to myself or Annie, and seeing you know, what can we what can we do to help you with that. And yeah, don't don't be afraid. Really, I think there's a a lot to be had from it. So I think that's everything from me. Um, thank you very much.